the great things about living on my street is it's like living inside an episode of EastEnders. There's always arguments going on outside all the time, and a woman who sounds like a chicken is arguing with someone? I don't know what's going on. But now I want to know what's going on. Will she say more? She is screaming. She's very unhappy at something. Oh, no. She's just beaten a bin in a fight. Kick the bin while it's down. Well done. Let's see if I can see her out the window. She's ran off into the night to go and be an angry chicken somewhere else. I think this is a prime time. We'll turn the light on. I think this is a prime time to share how great you look, Luke. Mm -hmm. Look who's here. It's Mr. Morning himself. Luke, you can't see very well because it's dark, but uh, Luke's here. Yeah. Luke, do you want to tell us about your fun night last night? Yeah, little one got rushed into hospital at half past midnight. And we left the hospital at quarter past five this morning. And I'm still going to work because I'm just that sort of person. I'm so tired. Of anyone throughout history who's had an excuse to maybe not go to work, I think a parent who's been at the hospital all night with their child ranks pretty highly on that scale. But uh, And you can tell that we're both not exactly ready to shout today. So hopefully it's quiet. We'll turn up. We'll be at work. I said a few minutes ago. We'll, we'll be at work in body, but maybe not in spirit. But uh, how's the cup of tea? It's all right. It's good. Okay, cool. Right. Let's and the snowstorm. I'll film that in a sec. Mornings, man. Mornings. I said in the video yesterday, the danger of walking past the shop because of the one-pound chocolate bar. One-pound bar of caramel. Breakfast of champions. Uh, it's still snowy down here, so we're walking to work. Yeah, it's cold. It's very cool. I was going to say something else insightful and fun, but I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, there's some workmen over there digging up some stuff. Which is... Uh, where are they? There they are. Which is interesting because this was one of the locations that I was considering for burying one of the treasures. And it's a good thing I didn't, because there were trucks over it all day. Or maybe I should have done, just to test how well that would have actually managed to hold up. Uh, as soon as the ground's not made of ice anymore, I'll see what I can bury where. But for now, we have to go and be fantastic at work. So, good news and bad news. Uh, bad news is, apparently I'm not in today. Uh, I missed an email, or I read an email and just forgot to flag it up as important. That says the rotor has changed and my shift today has been moved to Thursday. So I'm not in Tuesday and off Wednesday, Thursday. I'm off due to Wednesday and in Thursday. It's my fault completely, totally forgot. So that's the bad news. I walked all the way to work, and now I have to walk all the way back. The good news is, I am looking at this as a one hour exercise break. I'm awake, I've got dressed, I've walked half an hour to work, chatted to Luke, had a cup of tea in the morning, walk half an hour back. Might even swing by some charity shops in town, because I didn't manage to get around all of them yesterday, and uh, see what I can see and then carry on with the whole being productive stuff. Maybe even try my new green screen out on a game like Baldur's Gate or something. So I'm not in today, but I am at least awake. Oh, also, the Masters 25 box that I wanted to buy has increased in price from 180 quid to almost 200. I need to seriously reconsider whether it's worth spending that much money on the cards when you don't get that many and the price is increasing heavily every day. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Bird. You were doing something interesting on the top of that lamppost. You were banging a stick against something and you looked all sneaky. And then you flew off. Thanks, that's a great video. I was going to be really interesting and then you ruined it. Stupid birds. So parts of America, I think Florida, have just passed some kind of I don't think it's a law yet, or a bill, but it's a serious consideration of arming teachers. 
as in giving teachers in schools guns. Because sometimes crazy people in America go into schools with guns and shoot people. So their solution is to arm, or one of their proposed solutions, is to give all the teachers guns so they can defend all the students. Okay, a couple of problems with this. Teachers are massively underpaid and overworked. They spend more time at school than the students do. When are you going to find time to train them in firearms? Uh, teachers are also, in general, uh, people who suffer highly from uh, depression, sometimes drink, drug, alcohol related problems, stress, definitely. You're going to give someone who's in an incredibly high demanding job, with relatively low wages compared to what they actually do, a gun and expect this to turn out fine. Okay, cool, I can get behind that as well. Let's say that you do find a teacher who's mentally sound, mentally stable, all the faculties are there, and they have enough time within their copious amounts of marking to find time for firearm lessons, handgun training as well. We're assuming a couple of things. We're assuming that absolutely none of the kids in the school ever get their hands on the gun, because if that happens, we're in trouble. Let's go to the worst case scenario. Let's say that teacher, that stressed, overworked, underpaid teacher, in the absolute worst case scenario, has to draw a firearm and fire at a student. There's a couple of scenarios. First one is that student is a danger. You hit them and you take them down as everyone thinks is going to be great. That teacher's then got to live with the memory of killing one of their own students for the rest of their life. Not exactly what they signed up for, when they were popping to university to learn how to teach the young people of tomorrow. Killing them isn't really in the syllabus. I wasn't really... Uh, that wasn't fully explained to me back when I was doing all my kind of working with kids stuff. I, never, I was never taken to the side and said, Hey Josh, I know that you're, you're working on how to discipline these kids and you know, how to help them work together, how to build teamwork, how to build confidence, but just so you know, you might need to shoot one every now and again. I'd... Uh, I don't think I'll be on board with that. So that's the, the best scenario. The best scenario is that they do successfully hit the student they're aiming at. There are two more likely scenarios. One, they miss. Okay, then you've got a gun firing stray bullets into a building full of kids. That's going to go wrong in many ways. Uh, the third option is you hit the wrong kid. That's a massive lawsuit waiting to happen. And even forgetting all the legal kind of plethora surrounding that, you don't want to shoot the wrong person. Trained police do that. The army do that. They have a saying for it. It's called blue on blue, where you shoot at someone on your team. Can you imagine a teacher discharging a firearm in an attempt to keep people safe and hitting the wrong kid? God, that's going to be awful. And then the SWAT team or the police show up like the heroes they are and run into the school, what have they got to deal with? Well, they've got to deal with, potentially, both an active shooter, as in a kid running around with a gun, and another active shooter, teachers attempting to take this kid down. How the hell are the SWAT going to know who to shoot at? They're just going to shoot anyone with a gun, or they're going to tell everyone to put their guns on the floor and expect everyone to just comply. It's just a bad idea. It's, I mean, England, we don't have many guns. Inner cities, yes. Farmers, yes. Farmers' mums, yes. But uh, England, we don't have too many guns at all. And I can't remember the last time we had a school shooting. I'm not saying they haven't happened, but they're not all over the news. Australia, they had one school shooting and they weren't, that's it. No guns for anyone. And pretty much everyone went, yeah, all right, that seems fair. It's just basic maths. If you have a couple of hundred kids in a building and you increase the amount of anything in that building, you're going to increase the amount of accidents with that thing. For example, you have a building with a hundred kids and you decide to fill it full of ladders, eventually someone's going to hurt themselves on a ladder because there were more of them. It's going to happen eventually. You're just increasing the odds. You have a building full of kids and you fill it with guns, someone's going to hurt themselves with a gun. My solution, level the playing field. Give everyone guns. All the kids, all the teachers, all the janitors, all the parents, people who walk by the school who don't even go there, 
arm everyone. Absolutely every person. Everyone should be able to defend from an active shooter. And if that sounds stupid, ask yourself why does that sound stupid? It's only one step away from arming teachers. If you're thinking, hmm, maybe giving everyone guns is a bad idea, then maybe giving anyone guns is a bad idea. I understand some people legitimately need it. The military, the police force when they're responding to exceptionally dangerous or violent crimes. But seriously, the classroom? I mean, I find that timeout works relatively well. I'm sure there are some inner city schools that are very, very tough. The kids maybe don't listen to the timeout rule. But I don't think having the potential to shoot one of them is really the correct response. We're also assuming that a school shooter is always going to be a kid bringing a gun in or someone from outside the school who's not related to it. Can you imagine what happens if a teacher snaps? You give a teacher a gun and suddenly they decide they're too stressed, they're underpaid, this isn't worth it, the kids are being exceptionally annoying today. Oh look, I've got a gun. It's just a terrible idea, America. Army teachers, man. I mean, yeah, if you're going to do that, at least pay them equivalent to whatever you pay the highest paid SWAT team member. Because you're not asking them to just be an educator, you're asking them to be a protector as well. You're turning them into frickin' Avengers. And how many people would consider joining up and becoming a teacher just to get a gun? It's pretty hard to become a cop in America. And yet, there's lots of terrible cops. I'm not saying they're all terrible. A great deal of support for the police. So the idea that you could just join up, become a teacher, get the bursary for it, and get given a firearm, seems like a bad idea. That's just my opinion, though. I've just done some reading up on the subject, so I like to at least know a little bit about what I'm talking about before I try and talk about anything. Hazard pay in America acknowledges that you work in a hazardous environment and increases pay every six months by between $15,000 and $25,000. That means in a year, a person who works in hazardous environments should, from hazard pay alone, receive an extra thirty dollars to $50,000. If you arm teachers, you are acknowledging they work in a hazardous environment. If you do not work in a hazardous environment, you don't need a gun. If you do work in a hazardous environment, a gun is probably part of that protection. If they are going to increase their wages by an extra $30,000 to $50,000 a year, there might be some arguments made for it. Let's see if that happens, shall we? Let's see if every single teacher in America, or every single teacher in Florida, that gets armed gets an extra 30 to 50 grand a year pay rise. I don't see that happening, do you? My hair has reached maximum levels of floofiness. Not fluff, floof. And uh, if I let it grow, it'll do that thing where it slowly grows down my face, but it won't, because it does that really annoying tennis ball kind of thing where it just grows out like a massive mushroom on top of my head. If I turn the camera around, you can see the uh, the mirror there, we've got this whole kind of uh, 80s thing going on at the back. I look like a member of Wham. So I'm going to go and have a haircut. Off to have a haircut, after having a shower, and I've apparently stepped into Narnia. But uh, washed my hair, so yep, there's all the, the clean floof. I can't put my hat back on now, so I'm holding my phone in my other hand. Um, so yeah, off to have a haircut. Try not to slip on all this snow. I want to get back, maybe do, whoop, careful there, get back, maybe do some more, uh, some more of the streaming. Getting a couple of comments on Facebook about the vegan video. Remember when there was that vegan woman in town, about the arguments for and against veganism. I might make a video because one sentence, one thing that she said to me really, really stuck with me. She said the UN published a report saying that it thinks the world should adopt a vegan lifestyle. I disagree with that entirely. Um, for the major example, Inuit. Uh, the Inuit people of extreme cold temperatures have to survive off seal and whale blubber. You cannot only eat vegetables and fruits in an environment where growing or finding access to vegetables and fruits is going to be exceptionally difficult. Uh, so I might make a video completely debunking everything. I'm not saying that being vegan is bad. It's entirely a personal choice, and if you want to be vegan because you don't like the idea of killing animals, that's fine. That's a completely legitimate reason. But don't hide behind scientific or pseudo-scientific reasons that actually, with a little bit of research, don't support your position.
So, I might make a video examining the ins and outs of that. I'm not saying it's bad to be vegan. I'm saying don't justify your moral choice with scientific standpoints that actually don't support your cause. Uh, and to everyone who comments on that video, thanks. It's always nice to have those little bits of feedback. I have a strong trust in professionals. I like to think people know what they're doing, especially when it's their job and they get paid for it. So I don't really ever ask for a specific hairstyle. I tend to just walk in and say, do whatever you think would work. You're the professional, I trust you. You know my, sh my face shape, you can see me. You cut hair all day, every day. I don't. You do what you think would work. And today we've ended up with this. Which I kind of think works. I'm entirely okay with that. It's not bad for a tenner. Can't really complain for a tenner. Trust the professionals and you never know what kind of hairstyle you might end up with. Might even suit you. I might even end up liking it. I quite like it actually. It's a bit short on the size than I would normally do. But, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it looks on Twitch, that's the important thing. Okay, some days I just love charity shops. Some days you can just find some great things. Picked up two awesome things today. As soon as I get in, setting the camera up on the little tripod and doing a little explanation as to what they are. Might even put that video on Facebook as well. Very, very happy. Keep catching my reflection in uh, windows and mirrors around the place thinking, who's that guy? And then realizing, ah, it's me. It'll take me a day or two to get used to this hair. Uh, I would personally gel it slightly, slightly further back than they've put it. But, uh, hey, it's hair. It grows back. It changes. I don't know if I like it or dislike it right now. I'm not sure. I look a bit like Sky Warden, who's the bass player from Avenue Park. So that's probably where the confusion is right now. Anyway, when I get in, this video for the charity shop thing is very, very impressive. It is to me, anyway. Right, regular viewers and local friends of mine will know that I have a bit of a strange hobby. I love going to charity shops and seeing if I can find anything rare or anything valuable. Now, today I hit the absolute jackpot. I'm really happy with this. I want to say there's three things that I'm looking for to find something rare or something valuable. The first thing is, is it an established IP? As in, do people know what it is? like uh, Pokemon, or Mario, or Hornby Trains. Is it a big, famous thing? If it's big and famous, it's normally going to be rare to find. Number two, is it old? Now, if it's brand new, and to do with Pokemon, you're going to find it everywhere. But if it's exceptionally old, as in first generation, first edition, and to do with Pokemon, then it's going to be very, very rare. Don't worry, the thing I found today is not to do with Pokemon. It's uh, much, much rarer. And three, what kind of quality or condition is this thing in? If it's brand new, amazing. But if it's brand new and it came out last week, you're going to find it everywhere. But today I found something fantastic. It's an established IP, it's very old, and it's in great condition. So, not a massive fan of the IP itself, but this is what I found. This is an original Thunderbirds model, Thunderbird 2. So as soon as I spotted this on the shelf, I thought, okay, Thunderbirds. I know Thunderbirds. How old is it? Well, very. I, I typed it into Google, and the only other versions I could find were from Japan. It's one of those old-style models that doesn't have anything on the back of the box. It's just an original one. Batteries are not included. Motor is made in Japan. I can't see, I can't see a date on here, but uh, definitely, definitely old. So I thought, okay, established IP of Thunderbirds, it's, it's old, it's an original model, what's the quality like? Well, I opened it up, and then I very, very carefully undid the, uh, the sellotape that everyone at the charity shop seems to stick their boxes together with. I don't want to rip anything, there we go. I thought, what's the quality like? Well, the quality is untouched, as in brand new, all these plastic parts, they're still on the original sprues that they were printed on. This is an absolute untouched, brand new, old school Thunderbirds model. There are no instructions printed in the box, but 
man, look at that. You've still got all of the wheels, you've still got all of the legs, that's all there. That's absolutely incredible. You've still got all of the bits of the, the rescue miner just there that I need to start putting together. I've got the the original motor that it came with. These bags aren't even secured um, by the little uh, zip lock. It's just a staple. And I'm pretty sure that's how they used to secure all the models. I've got, again, the original sticker transfer sheet. And on the back, the writing is Japanese or Chinese. I can't make that out. That's definitely not English. I've got uh, another tiny... You can tell that it's an old school model because it comes with these uh, metal moulded pieces in there that looks like it's going to attach to the motor somehow. And then I've got these tiny little uh, brass holders and tiny little what look like uh, bolts to go somewhere. There's no instructions, so I've got no idea how I'm going to build it, but I'm going to try. And in this, in this bag, I've got what look like tiny brass bars and a black tube. Yeah, well, it looks like a black tube. Now, if I take everything out of this box and I use only the cover art, I'm going to have to be able to make the miner from that. I'm going to be, have to be able to make, yeah, Thunderbird 4 recovery vehicle and mole models in pod. I've got no idea if every bit... I mean, for example, if we take just this green sprue, we can see that one bit has been popped off just there. I'll turn it around so the camera can see. We've got this green sprue just here and one bit has been popped off there. But the very fact that one bit has been popped off and nothing else? It's incredibly rare to ever find a model this famous from an IP this well known, this old, in this condition. This is fantastic. Is every bit there? I don't know. Are the instructions online? I don't know. I googled this. I simply googled uh, Thunderbird 4 large size model kit and the only results I could find were all from Japan or all from China and they cost about 70 or 80 quid with about 30 pound shipping. So what we're looking at here is probably about 100, 120 pounds worth of old school model. I found this in a charity shop just now for 1.99, less than two quid. Less than two quid for a piece of absolute modeling history. I'm very, very, very happy with this. Am I going to build it? I have no idea. I'm going to hold on to it for a bit, do some more research, find out exactly what I've got, see if I've got all the bits, and then maybe make a video of attempting to build it. But uh, this is why I do my hobby. This is why I do charity shops, because you never know when you're going to find an absolute piece of history. So I got Baldur's Gate all loaded up on my computer, ready to sit down, record it, play some Baldur's Gate with the new green screen in the background. Check that out from the lighting. Uh, and then I realised that we've just had an Aldi open up just down the road. So if I now walk down my road and turn left, I can go to Lidl. And if I walk down my road and turn right, I can go to Aldi. And I've not been to this Aldi yet. So I'm going to explore. I'm going to go and see what the new Aldi is like. It's an adventure. I'll fill you in. I'll give you a complete review when I get back from the new Aldi. Alright, for anyone doubting how cold it is, the snow is actually settling and quite thick now. If this doesn't melt by tomorrow, we're going to have ice. I'm walking slowly now because there's ice everywhere. So Aldi takes a little bit longer to get to. That's not playing out in its favour, it's a little bit longer walk. This is me reviewing Aldi. Let's, uh, let's have a look at the car park. Yep, it's got a car park. Okay, cool. That, uh, that went well. There's not much you can say about a car park really, is there? White lines painted on the floor, nice and visible. It's mainly what's inside that I care about. <sighs> if they have a bakery, ooh, if their bakery beats little, they might clinch this. Let's go and find out. Now, there is no in-store bakery, so we cannot pretend they didn't lose points there, but they are selling steak for three quid. So, three pound for a steak, seems all right. I'll get home and cook it and see if it's any good. I've eaten a lot of meat today. Uh, they also sell um, those rainbow sugary strips covered in sugar uh, that some people call unicorn strips that I call gay bacon because it's rainbow and covered in sugar. Um, so yeah, that's good. Got some of these sweets that I wanted. Also, five cream eggs for £1.50. 
done, Aldi. You've uh, you've impressed me. Well done. Will you usurp Little? Ooh. Time will tell because Little has still got those freshly baked warm cookies. But uh, for what it is, it's not bad. I'm gonna go home and cook this steak. See if it's any good. If it's good steak, it might just win.